Welcome to Loon's Leaves, y'all. Today we're going to be talking about prepping your house plants for the spring. Welcome back, y'all. And today we're going to be talking about how to prepare your plants for the spring and summertime. In my last video, um, prepping your plants for the fall and winter, it probably I think was my first video on this channel actually. In that video, I went into depth on humidity in the home because that's something that's super important to remember in the winter time, keeping humidity levels up in your home, not watering your plants as much as you typically would in the spring and the summer because they're kind of going to go into a bit of a dormancy. Now, I still see growth in my house plants throughout the winter time, um, fall and winter time. Like this alocasia here is getting some new growth right popping up right in the middle and this is the middle of February right now. And the monstera behind me is also popping several new leaves. So I do see a good amount of growth still happening in the winter time with my plants, but some of you may not. They kind of will go into that bit of dormancy. So this is going to be some helpful tips on how to help you prepare your plants from making that transition from winter into spring and summer. The first thing you're going to want to keep in mind is you're going to need to be watering your plants more. The heat is going to go up wherever you live, I'm assuming, unless you live in a climate where the climate stays the same the whole time, then you don't really have to worry about these tips and tricks because you're going to keep those practices up all year round. But if you live in a place like I do, the northern US, the heat goes up dramatically. It gets super humid here in PA. And so you're going to need to water your plants a little bit more than you typically would in the winter time because the sun and things like that are just gonna suck it all up. Your plants are gonna be really thirsty once it hits summertime. So some of the things that I keep in mind with watering, other than watering more frequently, are ways to water. So if you are a lazy plant parent, and I hate to use that word because I think that you do whatever you need to do for your plants and that's going to be fine. No one should be judging you on how you water your plants or how you fertilize your plants or any of the things we're going to talk about in this video. So if you disagree with me, that's fine on the following items um, and do what's best with, for your plants. So for watering, I top water and I bottom water. So top watering means you're just watering from the top of your plant down by the uh, root system. So right near where the soil is, you're watering with watering can, glass, whatever you want to pour the water on with. There's also a method called bottom watering where you fill some sort of vessel with a little bit of water, usually a low standing dish or container, and you place your plants that have holes in the bottom, so your plant pots that have drainage holes, you place that in that vessel and then your plant will suck up all that water from the bottom. This is how a lot of nurseries do it. It's also how a lot of big box stores do it. I've noticed that if you buy a plant from particularly Lowe's or Home Depot here in the US, you will see um, some strings coming out of the bottom there. And that cord is what the nurseries use and what the big box stores use to help suck up the water towards the root system. So bottom watering can be super beneficial for your plant because it's only going to be taking in the water that it absolutely needs. So you don't have to really worry about overwatering your plant because it's their job to suck it up from the bottom. It's also going to be a lot closer to the root system, so you don't have to worry about underwatering your plant because if you underwater and you're only watering that top level of soil for your plant pot, then the water might not reach the bottom roots, your roots will not grow to be as strong, and your plant might weaken a little bit and therefore be underwatered. So, bottom watering is one of my favorite ways to keep up watering, especially in the spring and summertime because it's easy. I can get a huge container out, put all my plants in it, you could fill up your bathtub even, and all your plant pots with those drainage holes, you just stick them in there, for 20 to 30 minutes, they suck up as much as they need, you put them all back where they belong. This is also really great for your outdoor plants. If you live in an apartment like I do, 
our balcony doesn't have any places where I can put soil into the ground. I have to uh, completely grow a garden within some sort of plant pot or vessel. And so it can be a little bit challenging to make sure that has enough water or isn't overwatered in the spring and summer when it rains and things like that. So I really love using these types of containers. These are just, you can find them at any plant store, uh, big box store, even grocery stores sometimes carry these. These two are particularly from Walmart. I like this one because it's nice and long, so you can put multiple plant pots in it for bottom watering. Um, and this one's nice and big too. Again, you can put multiple plant pots in there. Bottom watering is also really great when you go to fertilize. So a lot of people will start to fertilize in the springtime, and that's probably when it's best to start. I would say maybe mid to late March, you're gonna wanna start fertilizing your plants again. And like I said before, this is completely my own opinion. So if you feel like you want to fertilize all year round, you live in the same climate all year, maybe you're a California dweller or you live down south and it doesn't really change in temperature too much, you can fertilize all year round. Some people think that's a bad thing and you could over fertilize your plants, but that mostly happens if you're using chemical fertilizers, which I do not particularly use. Um, chemical fertilizers include most name brands like miracle Grow and things like that will have chemical fertilizers. So I have a couple of recommendations for what I use to, chemi to not chemically fertilize organic fertilization for plants. So I would typically, things to keep in mind, I would start, if you live in a climate where the seasons do change, I would start between mid-March and late March fertilizing. I would personally fertilize about every two months or so. I don't feel the need to fertilize my plants anymore. Um, sometimes I forget to fertilize every couple months and they still seem to push out new growth. It's just gonna encourage your plant to push out more growth. So if you don't end up fertilizing, it's not really a big deal if your plants are happy, but if you wanna see more growth, I encourage you to fertilize every two months or so. You can also fertilize more frequently than that, especially when it comes to organic fertilizers because you can dilute the fertilizer to, to your needs. So this is my favorite fertilizer. This is, sorry for the glare from the light. This is fish fertilizer by Alaska, or a lot of plant people call it fish emulsion. Um, and it's just bits of fish poo and things like that fertilizer. Um, and this entire bottle is probably, I've had this for over a year and it's still this full. So I've only used about this much of it because you take a tiny bit of this, there's directions on the bottle, and you mix it in your water and then you can go and bottom water if you want to. That's why I discussed bottom watering before this. Or you can just put it right onto your plant's top water. But you do have to dilute this a little bit. I dilute it more than most people do, or I dilute it more than what the package says because the smell is pretty intense with this stuff. And so if you dilute it more, then you might want to fertilize more than every couple months. So it's kind of up to you. This is my favorite. My second favorite type of fertilizer is worm castings. I don't currently have any worm castings right now because I haven't needed to fertilize all winter. Um, I'll put a picture of them up on the screen. And that's pretty much, again, worm poop. And then you mix the little pellets of worm poop in with your plant's soil. And then as you water, it's kind of a slow release of fertilizer throughout the season. So you can use worm casting once a season. You can sprinkle it on top of your plant's top layer of soil if you haven't mixed it in. If you're not repotting any plants anytime soon, you can just sprinkle it on top and it'll be that slow release. So I love worm castings. Gotta love the fish emulsion. They're really natural. They will not burn your plants, which is really important to keep in mind. Um, like some chemical fertilizers can. You can overdo it with those and they can end up causing more harm than good for your house plants. Uh, additionally, I use a couple of specialized fertilizers for some of my more odd plants. This is Morimo Food. Again, sorry for the glare. 
Morimo food for my Morimo moss balls. This is fertilizer specialized for them um, because they already are submerged in water. They're going to be needed to fertilize a little bit more differently. They are also an algae and not necessarily a general house plant, so it's important to keep uh, that in mind as well. I have used this and I also use, excuse me, one of the bottom watering containers I use just fell, but the um, air plant fertilizer I also use because they don't have any soil. There's nothing for the fertilizer like the fish emulsion or the worm castings to cling on to. So this little spray is great for air plants and will keep them happy and healthy. So there are a few exceptions um, that I go and use other than the worm castings and fish emulsion. There's also a product I would like to try in the future called Liquidirt. It's been, be, been becoming more and more popular in the plant parent community um, as a really natural and effective fertilizer. I've seen uh, people online raving about it because they haven't seen growth in some of their plants in a long time. And then they're suddenly using the liquid dirt, um, which again is an additive to water. You're adding it to, uh, I think, water, making a slurry, and then adding that slurry to water. So there's directions on their website and everything like that. I will have them linked below. And they're a great option as well for fertilizing. So that pretty much wraps everything up as far as how to prep your plants for the spring and the summertime. Um, you could, of course, also use your own compost or organic types of fertilizer that you personally want to create. I would look up recipes online, of course. I did have somebody DM me a few weeks ago asking if they could use their pet's um, waste as fertilizer, and that is something I would not suggest. So you need to make sure that you are doing your research and whatever you're putting on your plants is safe for your plants and also safe for your home. Um, some of that stuff, like your pet's waste, might not be as um, effective at fertilizing your plants and it also might not be safe for you to have around your house, house and inhaling those fumes and things like that. So just do your research. Um, be careful on what you use, especially if you're using it on vegetables and things like that that you intend to ingest. I, I use this for both indoor and outdoor uh, plant care as far as veggies grow, herbs, house plants, everything. So that's why this is one of my favorites as well as the worm castings because I know it's safe. I know I can't really overdo it or underdo it. It's just going to keep them at a nice uh, happy ratio. And then, of course, bottom watering, more of a no-brainer, safe way to water your plants without knowing that you're going to harm them in any way. If you don't like using the vessel, um, these plant pots are great because they have the drainage holes and they also have the saucer that comes with it. So you can put your plant pot on the saucer, fill the saucer with water, and it can suck it up from the bottom. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I'm also going to link some videos down below that other plant YouTubers have put out there that were helpful for me when learning how to first start fertilizing and bottom watering and just general plant care. Um, so I will have those linked below and I hope you found this helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next Sunday.